Good morning. It's Friday, 8.30 o'clock. Hopefully you're all having a good day on this um, interesting, these interesting times here. So figured I'd go into some more optimistic assets that I have a little bit more of. Um, I got a pretty positive outlook for these things. I mean, I put my money where my mouth is and these are the things where my money is. So most people at this day and age wouldn't be telling you, oh, I think that uh, there's not going to be any um, any value into buying gold and silver. I mean, silver seems to be forgotten about a little bit more versus gold. Um, gold seems to be the one that acts a little bit more on people's hearts and minds. And it seems that silver is a little bit more of a, it gets a little bit more picked on, a little bit more bullied. It seems like by the market, it doesn't really respond like, what you would think it should, but um, nonetheless, I'm just gonna look at some of these things, and you can see that we um, we're kind of moving within these two, well, with within some support and resistance here. And um, right now, the roof is about twenty dollars, and our support was pretty solid at let's say around thirteen, fourteen dollars. And looks like we had a little break to the downside there. So, not that uh, that's completely atypical for this kind of pattern. When we look at this, I mean, you could say that that's a it's a it's a declining triangle. I mean, this this is going down, so we're making lower highs continuously, and we're kind of staying the same at the bottom. And um, eventually, we had a breakdown out of that, so we might have um, a little bit of a, a downward phase here and then we might get support and keep going up um, on the monthly here yeah we can see that we had a, a tick downward right now the month hasn't closed you know it's still the month of March this could change we could uh, see optimism return into silver and um, I try to watch and learn from other people all the time too so some of the stuff that I've been hearing is this that there seems to be a lot of um, a lot of flow of, of assets or a lot of a lot of money or liquidity flowing into the US dollar right now so if you look at the dollar compared to some other currencies of other other different countries you can see that other currencies are pouring into the dollar um, which is essentially deflating it making the US dollar stronger so many people look at the dollar is a, a place to be right now. Like the U.S. dollar um, is where other weaker currencies are, are are currently transferring some of their wealth to, and it, yeah, that's called deflation because the, the dollar will get stronger in its buying power. Um, it's gonna be right back. Sorry guys. All right, I came back here. So yeah, I was talking about the deflation kind of happening right now. And I can't say that I'm a financial advisor. I know a lot about uh, economics and in the sense that, I mean, I've, I've taken some university economics, but that doesn't mean I know anything. So I'm humble enough to admit that. But um, what, I, what I've been hearing is that typically when there's periods of deflation, it usually supersedes hyperinflation. And, um, fuck. Oops. All right. <laughs> Sorry again. I'm up. I'm up phones. I got two of them here. Um, so it makes kind of sense, like, when you look at what's going on in the marketplace right now and uh, seeing, like, such a, such fear and uncertainty, just in such a big sell off. Everyone's selling off all their assets and, the only thing that's going to save the market is going to be the government and their printing of money because the average person, when they're scared about saving food and toilet paper for their bottoms, they're not going to be, you know, I mean, most people, unless they're real investor savvy, aren't like looking at the market to really buy more right now. A lot of times, I mean, yes, they know that they say it, but in their minds, they're worried about their positions and their assets and their retirement funds. So they're looking in their, their, they're not just throwing in the last of their cash reserves into these uh, these stocks. To, you know, I mean, um, 
these huge candles, like if we just, if I just come back to TD, um, like on these daily cents, I mean, um, hopefully I, I can make my point here. Um, shit. um Looks like my point's not gonna be too clear here, so my apologies. But when you when you see out of nowhere like no one's buying any of this stuff, and then you see like huge green candles, which are kind of suggestive that somebody's filling in the buy orders of all these people that want to sell, it just becomes like, well, who's buying it? Who who's buying it? I mean, um. Because it isn't me or you, and that's where, when the government stimulates the market and they they print a lot of money, and you could look at all the countries of the world right now. They're all printing, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, or they're, they're printing billions, and um, I maybe even dare say trillions. So to stimulate, to prevent the collapse of the economy, the government's going to print billions of dollars of money. So artificially create more money out of thin air, which will buy the stocks of these companies, these corporations, so that they don't completely collapse off the marketplace because that's what would naturally happen. So when all this new money gets brought in, there is a thing. Where is this new money going to go? I mean, um, a lot of times the average population, like when you say that, like Trump's saying that he's going to give a thousand bucks to each person. I mean, what the what the what the goal of that is for them to spend it, for them to spend it and put it into the economy and to stimulate it. But historically, when people are scared, they sometimes save it. They put their money in their mattresses, like they did, let's say, in the nineteen twenties or thirties, or when they did in um, World War Two kind of stuff, right? They 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 saved the money for because they knew that times bad times were coming ahead, but that's when that's when that whole period of let's say you know deflation, so the value going up initially, and then hyperinflation, the value comes crashing down afterwards. So when you hear of those stories like. You couldn't buy anything with all the money, all the German money. <laughs> That's what happened. I mean, um, they printed us so much money that it stimulates the market. And um, initially it looks good, but only to be superseded by the, devalu the devaluation of the currency that you have, which um, that's what I was listening to someone else make that kind of um, argument or just kind of talk about that historical event and um it made a lot of sense to me it really did i mean i was always just i'm always as fluid to anything that people can say but knowing some of that i mean that's maybe like in the short term here or short to medium term you might see a lot of a lot of um a liquidity flow into the u.s dollar because it's stronger still than all these other weak currencies, even though that it's based on nothing, it's backed by nothing. And that's where eventually, I mean, so when, when people talk, I mean, all, all fiat currency goes to zero because it is based on nothing. But that's just where, I mean, if we have a, a potential reset, I mean, that's where I never know, like whether the U.S. dollar does somehow retain strength or if we have to have some type of a shift in value um, but as that happens as all the all the liquidity flows into the US dollar it kind of sets people into this reset mode mentally too and now they're wondering where do I put this money where do I put this US dollar and then the all that liquidity is gonna flow into something I can't say I know what it's gonna flow into but when they're printing all this money it's gonna flow into something and then when you kind of put those two dots together, it's just like, okay, gold and silver right now have no reason to be panic sold, comparatively speaking to all these financial markets like the banks and 
stuff that are hyperinflated. When we look at something like an asset like silver, we can see that it's not overextended in terms of the MACD. It's not overextended in the terms of momentum. I mean, it's quite the contrary, actually. It, it is kind of fizzled out, so to speak, which means that it has the potential to keep going upward. So for me, gold and silver have always been the backbone of my investment portfolio right now because there's a lot of good fundamentals that, I mean, you can, you can see silver being said it's $12 an ounce right now. I dare you to go find a piece of silver for $12 an ounce that you can buy from any man, woman, or child. Um, there's no pawn, star, pawn store that will sell you silver at this price. You're looking at $20, $22 an ounce. I mean, go try to buy a silver dollar, a one ounce one. Um, so that's where it's just like, it seems like it's grossly undervalued in terms of like just the actual exchange from person to person. And um, this chart just doesn't really seem to do silver justice. I mean, a lot of people always want to scream manipulation and stuff with silver. I don't know if I want to buy into that, but I, I think that like more than most assets, I mean, silver is, you know, a, a, it's a commodity. I mean, it's got use case. I mean, in a lot of different aspects, I mean, it, it's used in a lot of medical equipment. It's used in a lot of tech, technological equipment. Um, it's got uh, medical values. It's um, obviously applicable in jewelry. Um, it's got a lot of actual use case. So silver, when you look at the cost of silver to mine, it's much higher than $12. So it's just like, it's kind of just like, why the heck is it this price? And I felt like this for a long time. I mean, um, it's always when you get exposed to it. So I was exposed during this time when everyone was hyped up with silver. And um, I had to, you know, endure a kind of a long suffering phase here. Um, but for me, it wasn't, I wasn't into the stock market yet. It was just buying some physical silver because, well, 2012, the world was going to end. <laughs> and uh, after the housing market crash and all this stuff, yeah, I mean, it's definitely believable. And when you, when you talk about how the financial system set up, I mean, and you realize that it isn't backed by anything like silver and gold start to seem like a lot more irrational, even though that, yeah, I, like when I was just 20 years old, I started buying some silver coins and some silver um, change and stuff like that. But now, like, I've actually made some bigger investments into it as an adult at these levels because for me, it looked like it was, it looked like it was starting to come around, especially right here. And it started to have a couple higher lows up until this this point right here and that, that was just completely almost unexpected so I'm just gonna look at it in a weekly sense here now and uh, yeah it's it's been sold off too but initially during uh, you know the panic everything sells off and then back in 2008 what happened was that gold and silver what they like to say is that they had a the coupling from the from the S&P. So as the S&P was moving downward, gold actually started to find the bottom and then started to move in the opposite direction. So people realized that initially people just to pay off their immediate debt sold all their assets, gold and silver included. And then once they realized that hey, these are actually the assets that are going to not go down and maybe will go up. The money reversed and flooded back into these assets. So I can't um, say exactly when those happened. Um, in 2008 right here, you can see that silver did drop off too during this phase, but eventually it found a bottom and started to actually move into another bull run or a continuation of what bull run it was already in. Um, yeah, so when you see that kind of breakdown there, you definitely people would assume that silver might be having a d decline as well, but um, yeah, I think I, I didn't look at the very specifics and the dates to show you that, that exact correlation, but 
Believe me, that's what that's what could be going on. I mean, um, gold in the 2008 period here too. We can see that initially gold started selling off as well. Um, almost almost for half a half a year here. I mean, almost till 2009, but only to be re regained right there. Um, Let me just take a look here and see if I'm so I don't know if I'm gonna keep solid with this because I mean it did a little bit sooner. I mean, the S and P had a decline. Let's say past two thousand nine, right here, right about to March, just the beginning of March right now, and then we started having a good little up and atom here. Um, same thing here. We kind of ended up in March, and just that. Man, yeah, it's just interesting, like, to, to really think, like, why I'm, this is going to be completely off, off the beaten track here. But as you can, guys can kind of see, um, I always have these watches as my, my, my symbol. And um, you might not really know what all these other symbols mean, but you can see that it's got the zodiac within one of these circles and then it's got the, the old names of the months so you can see that well April, March, February, January but Genevieve, Mars is actually what March used to be so during like the zodiac kind of cycle the beginning of each year is the spring in March March 21st roughly um, is the, the vernal equinox first day of spring the first day of the year and that's where these months were labeled at a different thing so when when it is the first first December is actually the the 10th October is the 8th September is the 7th and that's where a lot of these names have actually been rooted from but neither here nor there the first day in March March the 21st in a in a more astrological sense has always been the, the the day of blood man it's the blood it's the, the, the god of war aries it's um mars marshall um so it's always been associated with like roman culture especially when they say the the father of rome of romulus the king of Rome, the, the, the founder of Rome, Romulus, his father was Mars, born out of blood in battle. In battle. And um, <laughs> kind of went on a tangent there, but uh, there's always blood in the streets here in March and um, only to be superseded by the next phase, which would be Taurus or April. And that is the t typical, the sowing of the fields and um, the tilling of the fields, planting the seed for the maturation of the crop and the eventual harvest. So in the economic sense, you can always think like, this is a good time to plant your seeds, to make an investment here and to watch it through the nice summer months and only to be harvested in September and October, just before Scorpio. And that's, um, that's not always true, but it's a definitely interesting thing to look at, especially when you see something like, um, let's say right here, March and then we have this run up <laughs> I mean and uh, look where it happens October October right in Scorpio so that's just like that's not um, something to base all your trading off of but um, it's always interesting so right here I mean yeah we're in March again so March has always been like in a, in a sense of the Sun I mean uh, in the sense of the earth it always has been kind of a bloody month um, so I don't know how much you want to look at that in that kind of sense, but 
when you look at these indicators, I mean, it's not like I'm the only person that's looked at that. Why the hell is there moon cycles on this indicator here? Well, I guess I have too many things on here, but um, just look at that. So people will be seeing if the waxing and the waning of the moon, whether it's uh, its crescent is pointing to the left or to the right, and making um, making trades based on that, whether we're moving towards a new moon or we're moving away. And, um, well, that's why it's not as uh, far-fetched as you might think it is if you had a little bit more education with uh, astronomy and all that kind of stuff. But, um, hey, that's a, that's a topic that will keep you busy for the rest of your life. <laughs> but um, back to gold and silver here. Because th those aren't the main reasons here. I mean, um, that I'm that I make any investment, but it's just that's the stuff I like to like watch, watch and see if there's any correlations to see what the dates are, and um, yeah, I mean, right in here, October, it seems like we have a pretty good downfall, and um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't use that like as a verbatim <laughs> guide to doing anything, but. Um, it's just something I kind of reflect on personally, and I'll see how much it actually means in the long term. But uh, as of now, yeah, we could see any kind of movement bouncing in between here, but eventually this thing is going to break up here. I mean, it's just a matter of time. So for me, I am, I'm pretty confident just holding silver for a long-term investment. I'm talking 10 years. I mean, whenever we see this, eventually this is what will happen. No, if... But will I mean it's either the worst case it might go down a little bit and then kind of come back up we could have a kind of re-break back up here and continue up I mean what's gonna happen I don't know but uh, historically this is a um, this is not just like a company silver cannot exist there is no way that it will go to zero I mean um silver has always been a more method of exchange from person to person and uh, the only thing about gold and silver is that we've already came from a time that relied upon these assets as the back currency so there is a possibility that we, we don't you know use these as our our store of value or what we back our actual fiat or other value systems off of but um it, Regardless, if it doesn't become the main thing that uh, currency is backed by, it's going to be having value because of what I said, the, the medical aspect, the manufacturing aspect, I, I mean, um, the jewelry aspect. This stuff is going to be having value for sure. Um, and looking at the chart here, you always want to buy it when it's flattening. So right here, we can see it went up kind of went up a little bit more and then it flattened down right now so are we right in this phase is it going to come for a little bit more of a drop before we have this huge increase um, I'm not sure but when you're looking where to throw money right now that's not like at a huge risk of collapsing I mean right now like silver I mean dude like there's not a lot of risk for downplay like I guess there is a 25% drop probably at the, the worst case scenario like that's the absolute worst like we're talking seeing levels of, of 2004 silver prices way below mining I can't see that I think this drop was super atypical I think this is just like a golden opportunity right here I'm just gonna get this out of here I think this is a golden opportunity to get in at these levels any anything below here but you never know when people don't have any money in their hoarding how long this could trickle down before they realize that holy smokes our dollars have no value anymore things are going up in price and five bucks doesn't get what it used to does it 20 bucks doesn't get what it used to no and um things that will actually maybe hold on to that value are things like gold and silver and um that's where you can hope too. maybe maybe things it's a possibility it could be something like bitcoin too i mean that's like the whole <laughs> yeah that's a whole auto ticket there if somehow we have value be placed into cryptocurrency it's germ free <laughs> you can send it on your phone um, it's a 
it's a much more useful method of exchange versus hand-to-hand -hand gold and silver transactions. But I think there'll be room for both. There's room for all assets. And um, for me, yeah, you can kind of see why I'm bullish on silver. Um, the one that I'm holding in my, my bank is PSLV. So this is this uh, ETF of silver funds. So it's not just physical silver, but if you want to buy physical silver, you got to go through a, a bullion distributor. And I do have some of that too. I just have my hands in every aspect of silver, I guess. But um, here we can see that we were on a somewhat of an ascending triangle here, which was pretty, pretty bullish. And, um, Looks like we had a drop down here and touched this, this trend line and we've just continued upward. And you can see a big green candle here. And guess what guys, this isn't, I don't expect this is gonna be the government saying we can't have silver prices go any lower. They're gonna be scared. No man, this is, this is the population realizing that, man, everything is just like, where can I put my money right now that has a little bit of safety? And um, these are going to be the places that I suspect that are going to be good places to start throwing a little bit of money. I mean, uh, you never know if it could kind of continue on to the downside. Um, I'm just going to back off a little bit on a monthly sense, but it'll be important where this month candle finishes. But you can see that, uh, hey man, we're, we're on a ascending triangle here, and this is very bullish. We can see activity in here. And then we could see this progressively come back up. So in that sense, yeah, I'm liking how this looks a lot. Um, I guess you could say we've had somewhat of um, an increase here in the momentum for a while in silver. Um, looks like it's kind of coming down recently, but hey, this is only this is only the last couple of years here. So this isn't a great estimation. Um, but yeah, this is going up, price is going up, all seems dandy to me. And these aren't overextended anyway, like when you see how far these are, I mean, 1.8, this is barely one. So there's room There's room to go up here, and usually it might come up and come back down and touch and come back up, but you know how these assets work. So looking on the weekly, yeah, we have this move to the downside, and um, yeah, we couldn't sustain that little rally right there, but we all know why. And uh, yeah, we kind of talked about how when, when we're in a collapse or panic, we sell all assets, gold and silver included. So that's what happened in the 2008 thing. And these were the assets to reverse first. And uh, even if the S&P did somewhat regain and sustain back to its bullish activity, like these are the assets that are going to be the first movers back in recovery. And um, yeah, we can see here on the daily sense, it might not quite be time to empty the bags into this but we can see that it's trying to we, we're, it's it's trying to see what's going on um but yeah expect me i think i'm gonna do a video every day or two and just kind of watch gold and silver and kind of look for a clear point to maybe add some funds into these things i don't think it's a bad time at any time to add to your gold or silver position at these levels because they're not at all-time highs i mean in loom of the current financial situation, there's every reason. Um, I'll do more of the gold one next time, but yeah, I'll be looking at gold and silver a little bit more, and um, I'll be watching Bitcoin too because Bitcoin has been pretty active lately. So it had that huge jump, and we're kind of at a well. You can kind of see. I don't know if we're gonna. It's going to play out to this pattern right here and we're going to continue down a little bit but a lot of people want to see bitcoin kind of come up to these levels right there and if it does people are going to start foaming at the mouth here i mean if people start seeing bitcoin go up during this time a market uncertainty like everyone's going to start getting that fear of missing out and uh people are at, at the point here with bitcoin that people are now saying oh we could go back down and back down to 1,000 levels, <laughs> you know, that's nothing new that people have said. Um, let's say levels down to here. 
Uh, I don't know about that, but when we when we reach down to three or four, it's not completely out of the question. But there's always two scenarios that can happen. I mean, worst case scenario, we kind of have a complete failure of this whole twenty one thousand to twenty thousand. We start back over at, at one thousand, and who knows what we do from that point. But um, the other thing is that we do follow what we've all been kind of thinking. We're gonna have a repeat of the bull market. We're gonna have this higher high. We're gonna have this drawn out bear market. Eventually we're gonna regain it and we're gonna to continue to all time highs. So somewhat we're still falling within this trend here. We've we've had this downward turn of the market and um, can we can we regain it and can we can move sideways and continue on and reach these all time highs and then continue on into a bull market. So this is a lot more riskier than gold and silver. So that's where I wouldn't suggest you put all your money here by any means and depending on where you are at your life and your financial position and how risky you wanna be. But um, if you were buying Bitcoin at 13,000 or 10,000 or 15,000, I mean, why aren't you buying it right now for, well, it was, I got some last Friday at 4,500 um, but it's quickly 66 so we'll see I mean for me it's always been a more of a dollar cost averaging at different amounts depending on where we're at, where we are and what's the sentiment but um, we're, yeah it's a very pi pivotal important time for Bitcoin I mean the next the next few weeks and months are really gonna well determine its destiny over the next uh, couple of years we could see a few different things play out. We do have the happening coming up soon, so there's a lot of bullish incentive for this to to pump up. And we, if we see a pump in here, it could be it could be game on. But uh, if we fail to if we fail to come back and kind of absolve some of these big losses, we could have some more bearish movement down. Just like how this shit just goes downward, right? So it's not crazy to say it. We could just move sideways and down for longer. So that's where uh, there's always two possibilities. And if we're all psychic, we'd all be a lot richer. But um, for right now, it's nice to see a little bit of a regain there. We almost hit 7,000 there. So it's definitely not out of the question. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what this does. And uh, yeah, sorry about the long video here. It's time to get to work. Hey, this might be one of my last days at work too for a couple weeks. So I have more time than ever. And um, if anyone wants me to look at some other asset, just leave it in the comments. All right, thanks. See you guys.